Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been 35 years since the cult phenomenon known as Rocky Horror Picture Show hit the big screen in 1975. Its reputation grew and grew and grew and it is still growing and it's appealing to new generation as it just recently got its release on Blu-ray discs. It is available to rent at several video stores and uh, of course I'm sure you can get it on Netflix uh, and you can buy it on Blu-ray. Uh, this is a movie you just cannot miss. Now this is perhaps the most over-the-top, wild, zany, catchy, and funny exploitation movie ever made. This is not just a film, it's an experience. You really just have to truly be open to to enjoy. Now it's 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 fantastically just so engaging and so you see manip almost manipulates your mind into just enjoying it. It seems even uh, I've even found some people I've known have gone out of their way to say I'm not going to enjoy this movie, but then their just mind just gets twisted and manipulated by what's going on here, and they end up loving it. But still, in my opinion, it's easier to go into this thing with an open mind. Now, of course. Um, the story goes, you know, we quickly get to know a young and almost nauseatingly sweet and over-the-top young couple known as Brad and Janet, played by an over-the-top character, character actor, Barry Bostwick, who a lot of you might remember from um, the sitcom Spin City, playing the mayor, and uh, Janet, played by a very young Susan Sarandon. Yes, there is such a thing as a young Susan Sarandon, believe it or not. Now, uh, she, she is really different here than most, uh, most of you are probably familiar with her. But yet, her, with her annoyingly entertaining, yet high-pitched, perky voice, it's uh, so much fun to watch her do this type of role. And we get our first catchy song, which is, of course, called Damn It, Janet, which uh, really uh, just sets the tone of the movie, and you're just in it from there. You just, you, like, you're just always wondering what's going to happen next, and when something does happen, you, gotta, you, you, just, you just love it, and you're just waiting, waiting for more. Now, of course, the scene stealer in this film is, of course, Tim Curry, who a lot of you... A lot of you uh, fans of, Home, of the Home Alone series will remember as the hotel clerk from Home Alone 2. Now, uh, he, of course, plays Dr. Frankenfurter, who is, of course, the sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania. Now, this is really, really uh, where the film get, gets its, uh, I guess you could say, um, maniacal sense from. Um, now, also, uh, there's, there's also some great array of characters here, like Riff Raff, played by Richard O'Brien, who is responsible for the, uh, composing a lot of the music in this film, and the film in general. Um, and a lot of great characters here. Uh, of course, memorable songs, memorable dances, memorable routines. and A lot of people can quote this movie. It's, it's more than just a movie. It, it went far above and beyond that, but the fans helped make that happen. And it's weird to say that the fans of this film made the experience even more enjoyable when you go see it in the theater. But even when you're watching on video, just knowing the phenomenon it is, if you, again, with an open mind, you can clearly see why. It is entertaining. This movie is not meant to be taken seriously as a form of art. It is meant to be very entertaining, but there was a lot of hard work put into it. This is not to say that this was a lazy, lazy film. And it gave birth to a lot of careers. It even gave birth to the career of rock and roll singer Meatloaf, who plays Eddie a former delivery boy, who sings, of course, the hard rock and anthem Hot Fatuti, and that really propelled his career into the stratosphere. Now, again, you look at Susan Sarandon, she was, again, if, you, if you, this is 1975 and you saw this girl, you wouldn't say this, this woman is going to be a future Oscar winner at all. Barry Bostwick, um, you know, again, didn't, this is still his most famous role, probably, outside of Spin City, but at the same time, it, it, it helped get him work. You know, he was always a working actor. He never really struggled for work after this. Now, of course, the big scene stealer is Tim Curry, who, of course, uh, over the years has become a punchline of failed movies and sitcoms. But at the same time, though, he's still a very entertaining actor when you see him on anything. Uh, and he, uh, this, of course, will always be his trademark movie. But the thing is, is that despite the actors, you know, again, they made it work. Despite how you feel about them now, they made it work. And that's what, that's, that's what this type of movie does. It, it incorporates talent that is not trying to, uh, I guess you could say, be, you know, What's the word I'm looking for? They incorporate talent in a movie like this, but yet they're not expecting something, you know, like they're not expecting a masterpiece, but it's because they weren't expecting it. It's what they got. The people made it a masterpiece. And it's the fact that we enjoyed it helps make it that way. And I don't know if that makes any sense to any of you, but that's how I felt about it. It's because I enjoyed it is why I feel it's a masterpiece, which is why Rocky Horror Picture Show easily gets five stars.